I'd like to introduce Terry Limerand. He is a retailer, educator, and entrepreneur. He has more than 40 years of experience in the dietary supplement industry. Terry Limerand has researched and developed over 400 nutritional and botanical formulations, and many of these products are still top-selling products on the market today. He is credited as the first individual to introduce glucosamine sulfate, IP6, black cohosh for menopause, um, another first, standardized ginkgo biloba, and the concept of botanical standardization to the United States natural medicine market. Terry has an uncanny ability to find natural medicines that have enormous degrees of both efficacy and quality, and I'm very pleased to have him with us today to talk about curcumin. So, Terry, take it away. Thank you, Cheryl, and thank you, Jennifer, Jennifer for all the things that you do do to make this such a great program. And I'm very pleased with uh, the presentation, the slides, uh, the amount of research, and all that goes into making this possible. You ladies make me look very good and um, make it very easy for me and convenient. But folks, if you've got pain, you've come to the right place today, the right program. And over the next hour, I think we can give you a tremendous amount of information as to how you can reduce pain and inflammation. And probably even more important that you reduce the inflammation because inflammation is at the seat of the problem regarding pain as well as about 80% of all other diseases. But before we get to the subject of our presentation today, I would like to just take a few moments and really uh, express my um, desire to have you know that not any product in the industry will work for you. Not just in this indica indication or in the case of curcumin, but I believe that there are products in the health food industry uh, in a variety of indications for ulcers, for example, for um, dry mucous membranes, such as dry eyes, um, dry vagina, um, many indications, cold and flu, for example, or intestinal tract problems such as Crohn's disease, colitis, or COPD. There are many indications that can be served by natural supplements, natural products that are far superior to drugs, even prescribed drugs and OTC drugs that you'll find in pharmacies and drugstores. You can find equally as effective and safe products, not having side effects, but having residual huge uptake in side benefits, healthy benefits, compared to drugs. And these are natural supplements. But what we run into is the quality of the products that can be difficult to choose. It's hard for the consumer, hard for the shopper to understand products and believe me, I've been in this business 40 years, and I've seen the best of companies, and I've seen the worst of companies. And it's really difficult for the consumer to buy the right product at the right cost. Now, quality cost. Quality is expensive, but not as expensive as the inexpensive product that can be bought, and it doesn't work. If you buy a product for a certain reason, for example, you want to support your heart function, and you buy a product thinking that it's going to serve you benefits over the next several months or years, and then find out that the product is a bogus product, and believe me, pardon the expression, but I've seen a lot of crap being sold that can't measure up to what the science is saying. Now, you might read a good scientific article where a specific product or substance has been researched for improving heart function or improving circulation or reducing varicose veins or preventing colon flu. So you go out and buy that ingredient, but did you buy the right ingredient? And I'm not going to get into naming names or companies or who does right or who does not do right. I'm just telling you to investigate to be wary of that, to be cautious of that, and not the inexpensive product is going to serve you well. 
In fact, most times it will not serve you well because something has to be done to it. For example, I'll give you a very good example, grape seed extract. Grape seed extract contains large molecules that can't be absorbed systemically. They're called tannins. And they were used year ago, years ago to tan leather. They're very astringent. And all they can do is stay within the intestinal tract, not be absorbed into the bloodstream. And actually, you can buy a product that's very inexpensive called grapeseed extract that is almost 90 to 95 percent tannins, but it can still be called grapeseed extract. But if you buy a product that has all these tannins removed and all the very small molecular particles retaining or remaining in the product that will give you all the benefits and more because it's many times more potent than the inexpensive product. Well, I see, I guess you know where I'm going, that whatever you buy is not going to serve you well unless you know what you buy and you trust whoever you're buying it from or trust the company. Do your research, do your homework, ask questions, and investigate. And if you, and if you just don't have that time, Put your trust in someone who has an interest in you and not an interest in the dollar. It's very, very important that you get the right product for the right indication because otherwise you're just wasting your time, wasting your money, and you might as well not have taken anything. So let's talk about pain. I guess everybody has pain at some time in their life. Some people have it for a short period of time, temporarily. Some people may have it chronically, ongoing for what they may seem eternity. So we can solve that problem of pain and we can solve it very effectively and safely by using nature and using a substance called curamin. Curamin is what the Indians call, the East Indians in India, the all-in-one solution for pain and inflammation. Inflammation is at the seat of most all heart disease, all atherosclerosis. It is not high cholesterol that causes blocking of the arteries. It's, it's, it's oxidation and inflammation of the cholesterol that's causing the blocking of the arteries. COPD, asthma, emphysema, bronchitis, sinusitis, arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammation of the eyes. Inflammation is what we deal with on an ongoing basis, and our diet actually initiates inflammation. The food that we eat as Americans, the American diet, is pro-inflammatory. It causes inflammation. Our lifestyle is pro-inflammatory. So we initiate inflammation on a daily basis. And then we cause oxidative stress to our cells, which causes more inflammation from chemicals and pollution and smoking and sun. These all set up cases of inflammation. So if we could, as experts say, if we could reduce inflammation in the body, we could probably have a great positive effect on 80% of all of our diseases. So let's explore this today and see how we can do that safely and effectively. Pain. Acute pain. Acute pain is what is what is where your body is working normally. That is, if you stub your toe on the bedpost, um, if you slam your finger in the door, you hit your finger with a hammer, that is your body working in a normal condition. You have pain. You have damaged the tissue temporarily. Now if, it is, if it's done very, very severely, it may take weeks or months for it to recover. Um, I live in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and the other day I went to the Green Bay Bear game, and on the uh, way across in the street, uh, I was with my grandson. I went to grab him by the arm because he was crossing the street too quickly, and I saw a car come. And as I watched him, I didn't see the patch of ice on the ground in front of me. And down I went on my shoulder, on my wrist, and on my knee. Wow, did that hurt. Well, I sat through the game. That didn't help any because it was cold. You sit kind of cramped up because the seats are small. 
By the end of the game, my knee was so stiff and so swollen that it was twice the size of my normal knee. That is acute pain, not arthritis. If you did that over and over and over again, or just by sheer living uh, a long period of time on a, on a, in, a, in an area where we would damage our joint, we would have arthritis. But that is not arthritis. That is acute pain. But it should, with healing, be gone in a very short period of time. Well, I thought I broke my wrist. Boy, that night I did not sleep well. Um, I, I didn't know where to put my arm. I didn't know how to lay with my leg. Um, I was in pain. It's like a sprain or a strain or an injured knee. That is acute pain. Now, in reasonable amount of time, in fact, what did I do? Well, I did just what I'm talking about. I added a few supplements to my diet that I normally don't take on an ongoing basis. And within several days, I was walking normally again. Still taking the steps a little gingerly because you're putting more force on it when you take the steps. But it's healing in a normal period of time. What we are more worried about is chronic pain, pain that lasts for a long period of time. It continues way past the time when expected healing process should take place. It's more like the arthritis, the back pain, the nerve pain, tendonitis, bursitis, gulfers, shoulders, uh, tennis elbow. And why do we have those? kinds of pain because we are using those joints chronically as well. The longer you use those joints, when you know tennis is not a normal swing. We don't do that on a normal basis. Golfing is not a normal swing. We don't do that on a normal basis. So we are putting undue pressure on joints that once meant, you know, look at the, the swing of a golfer. That is not a normal process. If we don't stay well, eat well, exercise well, keep our muscles strong, you get the right nutrients to strengthen our ligaments and tendons and muscles, eventually we're going to start breaking down that cartilage. And when we get to a time when we have bone on bone in our knees, it's too late. So how can we recover? Well, we can always recover better than without supplementing our diet. We can take away some of the pain naturally. And we can also improve the healing process and regain and recapture some of that quality of joint structure and function and improve the synovial fluid, the hyaluronic acid, and get some of that cartilage back. This takes time. And many people are too, too impatient. They will take a product for a week and say it's not working. How long have you had this arthritis? Oh, 20, 25 years. My knees have never been good, in good shape for the last 20 years but they want results in a week, 10 days. We all are that way. That is nature. That is part of our, our childlike, I guess, feelings. We, we don't want to deal with it. We want to get it back naturally and quickly, and we don't want to take the time to allow it to heal and go through this process. We are always wanting, that's just second nature, I guess. It's just what we want. But when we have chronic pain, you know, I'll tell you what chronic pain is. Here's a good example. Give me some pills. I have chronic pain. Give me some pills. Well, you know, John wants to go golfing. Well, he gets up in the morning. He's stiff. Uh, knees aren't too good. I've got a pain in my back. Oh, my shoulders aren't really what they should be anymore. But my buddies called me. They want me to go golfing. And really, I would love to be out there with them. Calls his wife, Mary, I'm going golfing, but I really don't feel good. Okay, John, why don't you take some ibuprofen? Well, maybe I should. Well, you know what John is going to do? He's going to take some ibuprofen, and he's going to feel better temporarily, and he's going to go out golfing on that same tired, exhausted, pain-aching body. Only he doesn't know it. You know, it's the same thing as I drive down the road in my car and the red light, red light comes on and says, danger, alert, something's wrong. So I have some choices. I can pull over to the side of the road, get out my manual, check to see how, how bad it is, can I still drive on it, or can I make it over to the dealer before it breaks down? Or can I call one of these um, SOS, uh, automotive, whatever they call them, something like Northstar, 
They'll come and take care of me. I can do that. Uh, or I can just say, you know, I can ignore the light or reach under the dashboard in the old type cars and pull off the wire of the, the red light. I don't have any red light anymore. Nothing's wrong. I can keep driving. There's nothing there that tells me it's wrong. So taking painkillers that just cancel out the pain is like ignoring the red light. If you're going to continue to golf, continue to do the things you should not be doing, because you wouldn't do them without the painkillers, but since you took the painkillers, you can't tell you have a bad body anymore. And now as you go golfing on that injured knee or that bad shoulder, it's going to get worse. And then you're going to look for something stronger than regular painkillers. You're going to ask the doctor for a stronger prescription or a different prescription because all of them will wear out in time or not do what they were meant to do because we are getting more chronically ill. Now, America is the most medicated country in the world. Can you believe that? We have all the money in the world. No, well, I shouldn't say we have all the money in the world, but we have, we're, we're a very well-off country compared to other countries. We have more doctors, more nurses, more hospital beds. You know, that's the problem. That's really the problem because 95% of the world's population, listen, 95% of the world's population relies, rely on plant, plant medicines for their medicines, homeopathic medicines and natural plant herbal medicines support people all over the world, 95%. In the United States, doctors, you know, they laugh at that. Most people just, you know, poo-poo it. And the United States represents 5% of the world's population. And yet we consume 50 to 60% of the world's manufactured drugs in the United States. Because everything that is wrong with us is believed by everyone, including doctors, that it has to be a drug or a medicine. We are constantly looking for ways to cure cancer, to find a solution for cancer. We know what causes cancer in many, many cases, at least 80 to 90 percent, in insufficient diet, deficiency of diet, cigarette smoking, alcohol, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, all the preservatives and added chemicals in our food, fluorides and chlorides. We get enough abuse from our diet and from our lifestyle that experts believe that at least 80 to 90 percent of the cancer we see on a daily basis is initiated through our own life choices. Now here's an example in West Virginia, the rate of prescription drug use is the highest in the United States, with 17.7 .7 prescriptions filled per capita. We would never think of something natural. It seems to be a drug, but yet we are not deficient in aspirin. We're not deficient in any kind of medication. We're not deficient in ibuprofen or any of the other ones. Now, this means that on an average, there are almost 18 trips to the pharmacy to pick up prescription drugs per year for every man, woman, and child in the state. West Virginia leads as number one. This is from Forbes magazine, and all the other states are not far behind. So I'm not picking on West Virginia. It just happens to be that way, but it also happens to be that West Virginia is one of the sickest states in the country. Now, here's what most, well, here's what John relies on when John wants to go golfing. He's thinking about a leave or Advil or one of these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories for his pain. And this just cancels out the pain temporarily, doesn't do anything for the healing process. Most commonly used for pain, are the examples are ibuprofen, Motrin and Advil, aspirin, naproxen, Aleve, um, Voltaren, uh, Celebrex. These are all made for pain, but they don't change the structure and function of the body. Now, when you think about that drug the next time you want to use it, maybe you want to keep in mind, and you know you can buy Tylenol everywhere. You can buy it over the counter. You can buy it in any quantities that you want. Um, you know, usually when, when products are not safe, the FDA takes them off the market because they're dangerous. 
or at least there's enough warning to the consumer when they buy their product that they're dangerous? Well, maybe sometimes we just don't think about it, but each year, Tylenol, 100,000 calls to poison control centers, 56,000 emergency room visits, 26,000 hospitalizations, and more than 450 deaths from liver failure. Acetaminophen overdose is now the most common cause of acute liver failure. Now, on top of that, we add um, insult to injury. We drink alcohol, we smoke, and these are all abusive to the liver. The liver is a magnificent organ. In fact, the Creator made it so that if we would cut away and lose half of our liver surgically, it would regrow back to its original shape and size. The liver is that necessary for good health, and yet we abuse it on a daily basis, never thinking what that poor liver does. If, if we saw what's going on in the liver, if that was on our face, we'd drop everything that would ever have abuse to our liver because we could see it. We can't see what's happening to our liver. So the abuse continues to go on. And did you know about 20% of people with acetaminophen-related liver toxicity have taken less than the recommended daily dosage? Taking acetaminophen several days in a row can lead to a dangerous buildup of the drug in your body. Now, drink on top of that, smoke on top of that, drink fluorides and chlorides in your city water, Add all the chemicals that are in our food today, 55,000 chemicals in our environment. And uh, ladies put 200 chemicals on their face every day through the various cosmetics they use. Think of the world we live in. Why is acetaminophen so dangerous? Well, it causes a release of an enzyme in our liver that starts destroying liver cells. And you know, that's where death starts occurring. When we start killing more cells in our body than is being replenished and restored on an annual basis. You know that every seven years we have a brand new body? If everything was perfect, if we could manufacture new cells, turn over new cells as quickly as we destroy the cells and turn them over, it's like giving birth to a brand new body. But we kill off more cells. That's why some people are old at 40 and young at 80. It depends on how many cells are being killed off prematurely and where in our body that, they're, that they are killed off early. Now, other side effects of NSAIDs, and it's a long list, so I'm not going to even read it. It goes all the way from nausea and vomiting to abdominal tenderness to seizures and convulsions to purple spots on your skin, increased sensitivity to light, to weakness, muscle weakness, Next step, you know, sometimes you wonder if the benefits of drugs are worth it compared to the side effects that are associated with it. The other night I was watching TV and I saw a commercial for a drug that could help reduce asthma. Now, asthma is not a fun thing to have, and I'm not making light of this because we do want to find a solution for asthma, and there is, naturally. There is a plant or a tree called Boswellia in India that gives off a resin that is called boswellic acids that can reduce the incidence of asthma and all upper respiratory conditions. But this drug was being advertised, and then the side effects had to be listed as well. And I was wondering to myself, why would anybody with asthma want to know all these side effects, including a greater risk of cancer, and this drug could even cause death as a side effect. Now, um, asthma sounds okay in that case. Now, the problem, how can we reduce the inflammation causing acute and chronic pain without damaging the liver or causing other dangerous side effects? Well. There is a solution, and here it is. It's a plant from India. The all-in-one solution 
as it is called, by the Indians, because they have used this plant, this spice, for 5,000 years in their food, almost every meal, every day, for their lifetime. In fact, it has been stated by experts that if you do an autopsy on an Indian citizen who is quite elderly, and you do an autopsy on the brain, you will find that the brain is stained orange because it gets into the brain and colors it because it is a deep, deep color. As you can see, if you're watching on my slides, this is the powder of turmeric or curcumin. And it is a very, very intense orange. In fact, it's used as a dye in India to dye their fabrics. Now, the plant grows above ground. It has tall green leaves. And if you follow me again on the slides, here is on the left-hand panel is the plant as it grows above ground. It kind of looks like uh, tobacco, only it's uh, taller and green and uh, but it kind of kind of looks like that to me. And then the under portion, the, the root, which you see in the middle slide, is almost like ginger. It has that rooty system and fingers off of the main root. It's only ginger looks beige and tan, where the turmeric is orange, very, very intense orange. Turmeric is the super, super, super spice. I know many people talk about the super berries. And yeah, I love berries. I start my morning up every day with a big shake of frozen blueberries blended in with acai and with um, pomegranate and uh, throw in my protein drink. And boy, I just start off with a, a huge berry, uh, berry smoothie with proteins and so all kinds of good things in it. But this has got to be the super spice, the super of all spices. Turmeric is added to nearly every dish in India and it is one of the main ingredients in curry. Here it is again, very, very nicely shown. In fact, I have to admit, um, not because I'm such a great photographer, but I enjoy taking these pictures uh, because I was in India taking these pictures. On the left-hand side, here you've got the plant, and on the right-hand side, you've got what the root looks like when it's taken out of the ground. Now, the leaves that you see on the left-hand side of the slides, these leaves are dried, they're cut off, they're dry, they put them in big piles, they dry them. And as they dry them, they're burned, and then the ash or the residue is tilled back into the soil to replace nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, and other minerals that are commonly found in the leaves of the plant, so it enriches the soil. Oh, there you are. There's yours truly over in India. And all this piles of turmeric are being collected to be saved for next year's crop. It's like a potato. You don't plant seeds. You plant part of the potato. You have to have the eyes in order to have it sprout in order to grow the next crop. And that's the same with turmeric. You have to plant part of the root in order to grow next year's crop. And this is what a root looks like when it's cut open. It's as deep and colored as a carrot, where if this was ginger, it would look very similar, but it would be more beige in color, and not so orange in, in color. Turmeric, the medicine. It's an unbelievable medicine. And I've been doing this for over 40 years in this health food industry, and I've, I've researched and I've toured all over the world to look for different plants. And um, a few years ago, I got so interested in turmeric because I came across over 4,000 studies done just in the last few years in institutions all over the world by independent researchers, independent of one another. So something was going on that, that brought this interest to me because why are scientists so interested in this plant? Well, I'll tell you more about that as we go on, but even here in the United States, at Baylor University, at the MD Anderson Hospital in Houston, Texas, much research is going on right now with curcumin and turmeric. Why? Because it has a very pronounced effect on Alzheimer's disease. In fact, remember I was telling you that the brain of, of citizens of India, when they do an autopsy, the brain is stained orange. They don't have a word in their vocabulary for Alzheimer's disease. 
is practically unknown. They also have 90% less breast cancer. They have 90% less prostate cancer. And they are finding out that curcumin is a very, very powerful anti, or I should say, a preventative of cancer and also for the treatment of cancer. So it can be used for arthritis, it can be used for cancer, um, for also for Alzheimer's disease, pain and inflammation, and also internally the intestinal tract for inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, COPD, asthma, emphysema, sinusitis, bronchitis. If you could say any word with an itis, curcumin is going to be the primary foundation for eliminating the inflammation and the pain surrounded with or associated with that condition. It also can be applied topically for wound healing and much, much more. So what makes curcumin work? Well, it's called curcuminoids. There are three specific curcuminoids that are active in curcumin. Now, really, turmeric is the root. In turmeric, you have about 2 to 3 to 4 percent curcumin. So it takes a lot of plant, a lot of root, to manufacture curcumin. And then you have smaller quantities of the curcuminoids. And these are the curcuminoids, there's three. And the main one is curcumin. That is the most active and the most highly concentrated of the three curcuminoids. If about three to five percent of turmeric is the curcuminoids, curcumin is the most active of all three curcuminoids. Now curcumin, why does it work? And why does it work better than drugs? Drugs by virtue of the FDA's regulation, can only be one molecule. Just think about it because a drug, a molecule of a drug, has been invented in a laboratory and has never been on the face of the earth until a research scientist in a laboratory concocted it out of some foreign synthetic substance and they are researching it for a specific condition. Well, since we don't know anything about it, the FDA requires a good deal of research before that molecule can be released for human use. So it has to go through a tremendous amount of lab research, it's gotta go through animal research, it's gotta go through human studies, and the average length of time is 10 years from the discovery of that molecule until it is approved as a drug and it's at a cost of about $1.8 billion. Now, India has been a laboratory for curcumin for over 5,000 years. It is totally safe, non-toxic, has 112 known molecules, not one. Remember, when you put a drug in your mouth, that drug has never been on the face of the earth as food or nutrition but as a synthetic chemical compound. Curcumin has been a food, has been used for 5,000 years without side effects and have only good benefits. So curcumin is like a symphony or an orchestra playing with many, many instruments versus one instrument. So drugs target only one pathway. And, in the, and there are many pathways in the body that work together harmoniously. Well, when you affect one with that drug, you throw all the other ones out of balance. And that's why when you poison one enzyme system, like an inflammatory enzyme system, like COX-2 or 5-LUX, it is too powerful to effect. And some drugs, many drugs, cause side effects such as heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, and even Biox was taken off the market because there was too many deaths associated with the use of it. Now, curcumin has 112 known molecules, and not does it only work on one pathway, it doesn't poison that pathway, it balances all the pathways, and these are all the pathways that curcumin works on simultaneously, multi, on multi-levels, it, it's just remarkable what it does. So in that process, 
it, is a, it, it can reduce inflammation, chronic inflammation, which is associated with arthritis, heart disease, cancer, brain disease, and almost every chronic disease in our lifetime. At least 80 to 90 percent of all disease is associated with inflammation and oxidative stress. Wow. Do you think there is any drug in the market that could deliver a package of nutrients and molecules that could have an effect on all these diseases? Well, the research shows, that's why this is the all-in-one solution, curcumin affects positively, positively and in a health manner all of these diseases this is why curcumin is a pharmacy unto itself. It is a pharmacy of nutrients. It has an effect on all of these conditions in a positive manner. Now, here is one of the side effects, not side effects, downsides, I guess you would say, about curcumin. They found at the MD Anderson Hospital in their research laboratories that, and this was stated by their research analyst, that curcumin was the most powerful, promising, potential healing substance that they have ever, ever seen. And they have tested many, many natural compounds and many, many different synthetic drugs and medicines. And this, they said, was the strongest in all their laboratory research. It could kill colon cancer cells in 24 hours. It actually could reduce the plaque of Alzheimer's disease cells within 30% within one week. But now, the laboratory is a lot different than the human body. When you're testing in the laboratory, you have your testing substance in direct contact with the cells. No interference. When we want to do that internally in our human body, it has to go through ingestion, digestion, assimilation, dissolution. Um, it has to get into out of the out of the intestinal tract, into the bloodstream, into the cellular level. There are multiple steps that it has to go through. And regular curcumin, 95%, the research scientists said it does not get in the bloodstream. It is actually does not get out of the intestinal tract. So if it could get into the bloodstream and get into the cellular level, it would be a huge promising cancer treatment, preventative of cancer, immune enhancing, antioxidant, liver protectant, all of these that you just saw on the slide previously, it could affect all of these diseases. It is one of the most powerful healing plants in the world, if not the only healing plant in the world of this magnitude. But curcumin is poorly absorbed from the intestinal tract, it metabolizes easily to other compounds before it can be utilized. And using traditional turmeric at 95% is the poorest absorbed of all. So what do we do? Well, researchers around the world are looking for a way to increase absorption. And you know, sometimes truths are so simple. Why do the Indians in India get such great results? Because they use it as nature intended mixed with turmeric essential oils, boiled with fats such as buffalo milk or clarified butter. Fats increase absorption of many, many compounds. So a company in India came up with a very unique patented process where they actually take curcumin, they homogenize it with turmeric essential oil, bind it or bound it to phospholipids, and then micronize it into very small particles. Not nanoparticles, because I don't think that's where we want to go yet, but very small particles just to make it smaller and easier to be absorbed into the cellular level. This compound is being researched in Hong Kong at the University of Hong Kong, in Australia at the University of Perth, at the MD Anderson Hospital in Houston, Texas, and at Baylor University in Dallas, Texas, and many other institutions around the world. It is known as BCM95. B like boy, C like Charlie, M like Mary, 95, BCM95. 
It is a remarkable compound, and it holds a huge promise for many, many uh, supporting products of our um, disease-related conditions. So there are others out there that are also being researched. In fact, one here, which is bound to just phosphatidylcholine, um, and it does increase absorption at a factor of five times. So it has some value, and it um, has been researched for some conditions as well. Another one is curcumin that is bound to black pepper. Black pepper, or known as piperine, increases absorption of materials. Now, it is not the most beneficial. I'll give you some reasons why. First of all, black pepper, oh, sprinkle it on your eggs, sprinkle it on your salad, you're fine. But when it is standardized into an extract, piperine interacts with many drugs and medications. Now, it interferes actually with the metabolism of cardiac, cardiac drugs for cardiovascular diseases, high blood pressure medications, as well as anti-seizure medications. So it blocks the metabolism of those drugs so they cannot be used properly and in the right dosages. It also enhances the absorption of dietary toxins and also puts a stress on the liver. So piperine is not my choice. Now, here is my choice, and this is what the research company in India is doing with a BCM95. They first, they micronize it. That means the particle size is reduced substantially. They bind it with a complex of phospholipids, which increases solubility. And then, of course, they have homogenized the essential, the, uh, excuse me, the curcumin 95 powder. They've homogenized it with the turmeric essential oils. And here is what has been done in research because now we are able to get it into the bloodstream to measure it. And this is a, a study to see the availability of it in the bloodstream. So here is curcumin 95%, and here is where that goes on a period of ingestion. It is it raises up fairly well, not too bad, and it goes out into about eight or nine hours. But if you take it with the turmeric oil, it has a greater amount of absorption. In fact, it has about a thousand percent more absorption than any other form. <clears throat> with the combination of curcumin and black pepper, piperine, you get, again, some good residual benefits but not nearly as good as the curcumin and essential turmeric oil. Here's where it go. And we have found studies that have gone out even further, out into the 12 hours, but we do know that it's always going to be beyond eight hours, not necessarily always up to the 12 hours, but between eight and 12 hours for all the research. Now, along with curcumin, there are other nutrients that are quite beneficial for reducing pain and inflammation. Boswellia is a great, great anti-inflammatory. And it works on the 5 lux enzyme, which is the leukotrienes. When you have elevated leukotrienes, you're going to have complications. You're going to have swelling. You're going to have inflammation. You're going to have like Crohn's disease, colitis, COPD, asthma, bronchitis, uh, all the upper respiratory and particularly intestinal tract inflammation. Boswellia does not have the antioxidants. It does not boost the immune system. It does not protect the liver. Curcumin is the all-in-one solution, but if you want to add more benefit, then you add the Boswellia to that, and then you also add the DLP to that, and that's an amino acid that's natural, that's found in protein. But by adding the two of these combinations, you are increasing the release of the feel-good hormones in the brain, and you start release endorphins, which are 50 to 100 times, so even up to 500 times stronger than morphine, which is the most powerful pain-relieving drug doctors have. But you know what? They don't improve the healing process. They just uh, uh, change your perception of pain mentally that you don't have pain 
but it doesn't really reduce inflammation or pain. So additional support for relieving inflammation and reducing pain is a combination of four ingredients, Boswellia, DLPA, natokinase, and curcumin. And here's a little bit, a little bit on Boswellia. Boswellia is also known as frankincense. It is what the, the three kings brought to Jesus at his birth. It's a resin from the Boswellia tree that's a potent inhibitor of inflammatory compounds based not on the COX-2, but on the 5 Lux enzyme. So it, it has a tremendous effect there. Also, it's cytotoxic. It, it promotes cell death in cancer cells without harming healthy cells. Active compounds are known as phosphoric acids, and usually they're there in some range from 45 to 70 percent in the Boswellia. Now there are active Boswellic acids. This is the most this is the most active, according to all the experts in the world that agree. The consensus is that AKBA ACBA is the most active and potent anti-inflammatory compound in Boswellia. But there is also Boswellic acids in Boswellia, known as beta Boswellic acid, which promotes inflammation. So you've got some reduction of inflammation and some increase of inflammation. So the top researchers in India have removed beta Boswellic acid from Boswellia, and it normally occurs in the plant at about 25 to 30 percent, but it's reduced down to 1 percent. And AKBA is usually in the plant at about 2 percent, and it's enriched to about 10 to 15 percent. So it's a very, very, very potent Boswellia. I guess, I guess medicinally, curcumin is on my top list. Boswellia is right behind it. Then you have DL, DLPA, which is an amino acid. It's a pain reliever. It boosts mood-supporting uh, mood brain compounds and also breaks down, it also blocks the breakdown of the brain's natural pain-killing compounds called endorphins. Natokinase is an enzyme from fermented, fermented natto, and it increases circulation and blood flow and breaks up clots, so it's very valuable to help move the blood out of the injured area. Well, who should take uh, curcumin, boswellia, DLPA, and natokinase? Anyone relieving or needing relief of pain. Very, very powerful pain-relieving effect. You can use it for arthritis, bursitis, back pain, nerve pain, neuritis, neuropathy, neuralgia, tendonitis, bursitis. You put an itis after it, it'll work. Muscle pain, sprains, strains, weekend warriors, migraine headaches. Almost any type of pain can be helped by curcumin. Now, usually a couple, a couple thousand milligrams are required to get the best relief of pain. You need a sufficient quantity of all the ingredients to have an effect to reduce inflammation and pain. Once the pain is under control and gone and relieved, it may take a smaller dosage to maintain, maintain that, or in frequency, or use it as you need it, or it, it, as the body heals itself, you will need less and less of these four compounds. So individual dosages are highly variable, variable, some people need more, some people can maintain on a lower dosage, it's trial and error. A, uh, con actually consult a healthcare practitioner if you are pregnant or nursing, um, it's best to have advice if you should be on these kinds of ingredients. They're very, very safe, but you never know. So we've gotten to questions and I'm going to turn it back to Cheryl and if you've got questions on your mind and you'd like to ask whatever, what's ever on your mind, we'll spend some time and see how many questions we can answer. But on that same uh, list of questions, uh, we have a website, it's called terrytalksnutrition.com, and it's a very good website of information and uh, education and articles every week. They, they change every week, and um, I'll send you a free newsletter every Friday, email newsletter, to help you keep up on your educational process of good nutrition. Also, there's links there to find a doctor, a chiropractor, or a homeopathic doctor, or a naturopathic doctor. Um, it's just a good clearinghouse, a website for giving you information, and allows you to ask a question anytime you like. So if you want to email me a question, I will email back 
to you and answer to the best of my ability, but also make sure that, you know, I'm not a doctor or a physician, and you should also consult your physician if you are unsure of what your conditions are. So I'll turn it back to Cheryl. Thank you so much, Terry. What a wonderful presentation, and we've got a lot of questions in the queue. So uh, let's get started on some of them. Um, the first one is a person who is taking the prescription drug Zoloft, which is a, a, a prescription antidepressant medication that is works in the family of serotonin uh, reuptake inhibition, and they want to know if the DLPA in the formula you mentioned interacts with that in any way. Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, I think it's, uh, it's an okay product for you to take, and in fact, uh, curcumin, Curcumin, which we did not mention in the presentation, also is being studied right now on a depression study. Uh, there are many uh, uh, promising uh, indications that uh, curcumin can reduce depression. Um, if you are concerned about the DLPA, you can always use just pure curcumin, which I would say is probably about a 750 milligram capsule of curcumin. And uh, you can use that one to three times daily. That would also improve your ability to reduce depression um, and not have an interference with your medication. Um, but the newer drugs today uh, really are not um, involved with the DLPA as we did years ago with the MOA inhibitors, so I think you'd be quite fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're right, That's uh, we have uh, we can almost do a whole webinar just on curcumin and depression because Absolutely. it's a very interesting application. You know, people know about curcumin, many people know about curcumin and its amazing anti-inflammatory capabilities and its anti-cancer capabilities, um, it, tr it truly is turning into the all-in-one solution when you're starting to see some of the emerging science on um, being as strong as many antidepressants as far as mild to moderate depression is concerned. Absolutely, I agree. Okay, let's move on. Um, here's an individual who has a nine-month-old grandson who is on breathing treatments and the pediatrician suspects asthma. Um, is there a product that's safe for this baby to take? Well, children that small really should be under the care of a physician long term. And while we can say some supplements are very good, like curcumin, but curcumin is very difficult to take uh, for an infant of that size. Um, it's in a soft gel capsule. Uh, most of them are, you know, they're mixed with oils and mixed, and, and curcumin is, is a very, very intense dye. Uh, it's, um, it's colored. So the, the you know it, whatever it touches it gets stained so it's hard to take it in a capsule in a in a drink rather I should say or or by spoon it's um, it's a mess it's a mess it should be in a soft shell capsule hard shell capsule um, I I don't know how to answer that question you could email me and I could give it more thought but um, you know I also know that I know that there's also a lot of integrative medical practitioners that believe that. For a lot of the supplements, it's better when a child is weaned and they're eating a broad variety of foods. That's the better time to introduce um, supplementations. Although, if there's a uh, if there's an urgent need, a lot of them will deal with that differently on a case by case basis. Um, Terry, do I still have you? I heard a funny noise. Nope, I do. I'm here. Oh, I do. I'm sorry. I must have just been some artifact on the line. Uh, here's another one. Um, what other supplements would you suggest for migraine headaches along with the curcumin, boswellia, DLPA, and natokinase blend you describe for pain? Well, there is research on a number of natural supplements. Magnesium and B6 are very, very good. Um, I like to use the combination of P5P and magnesium. P5P is a biologically active form of vitamin B6. There is very, very good research. Uh, for migraine headaches and depression as well with vitamin B6 and magnesium. So that would be a good combination, P5P with magnesium. There's really good research on vitamin B2, riboflavin, 400 milligrams daily. Uh, there's research with ginkgo and there's research with feverfew, two herbs that can be used also for migraine headaches. So there could be a combination of them and sometimes there are companies that put things together like feverfew, vitamin B2, and magnesium. There are a variety of combinations, and if you go to a good health food store, they should be able to show you a variety of, of complexes that can be used to support you know, your health when you're going through a migraine headache. Is there one form of magnesium that's better to take? Because I've heard from a lot of folks 
Terry, that when they start to take magnesium, which we all know is excellent for migraine headache prevention, that they start to have some loose stools or some gastrointestinal problems? Well, magnesium, if you use oxide or glutinate, gluconate, some of those other forms of magnesium, they're very hydroscopic, so they bring water into the colon and they flush the colon out faster. It's like having diarrhea, a fast flush of water. Um, so it, in order to avoid the, the diarrhea or the loose stool when you're using magnesium, um, I have found one that works extremely well that doesn't cause uh, diarrhea, it doesn't cause loose stools or a watery discharge, and that is a magnesium glycinate, bisglycinate. And if I were going to use P5P, I would use a, uh, a magnesium that is attached to the a glycinate, and glycinate is an amino acid, and it's bound to the magnesium to prevent diarrhea or loose stool, and it gives very, very high levels of magnesium, better absorbed, better assimilated, and it doesn't give you that loose stool effect. Wonderful. Um, here's a very, a very kind comment from a listener. Thank you. That was wonderful. Well, thank you, too. And here is another question. Do you run the risk of curcumin losing its effectiveness if it is used over an extended period of time so that you would have to increase the dosage? No, I would say just the opposite. The longer you use it, the more effectively it's going to become because you are improving the quality of the body, the health of the body, and you will need less to keep it healthy. When I find people with pain and inflammation, they'll start off on a higher dosage, and as they become healthier and reduce the inflammation and the pain, reduce the oxidative stress, they can reduce their dosage. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. We have another lady who said that she loves curcumin. She um, she loves all of the products that you recommend, and she was pleasantly surprised at the beginning in your introduction to find out that you were the person who introduced clinically studied black cohosh for menopause into the United States. And so she has a question on that. She says that she takes the black cohosh, but she has heard that you cannot take it for over six months or it may cause eye problems. Have you heard uh, that, Terry? No, no, no. Well, here's, here's where there's a little bit of confusion. Uh, in Germany, where a lot of the research took place on black cohosh for uh, menopause, uh, the law there stated that you could not use a product for more than six months without then consulting a gynecologist. So in the leaflets of the product that's sold for black cohosh in Germany, it said do not use longer than six months because they wanted you then to go see a gynecologist. Oh, is there a jackpot? Um, so they wanted you to see a gynecologist in case something other, or there may be some other complications. Uh, but you can use black cohosh ongoing without any complications. It is very safe. It is not um, estrogenic. Uh, it does not cause any eye problems that I'm aware of. I have never seen any research. And I have been involved for a long period of time with the, um, the company that did the most research on black wash worldwide. And uh, I've never seen anything like that. I would consider it to be very safe. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if I can add one thing, if you are considering using a black cohosh product, please make sure that it is standardized to 2.5% triterpene glycosides because there's an awful lot of products on the market uh, that uh, use less expensive black cohosh or that isn't standardized to the same amount that was used in the clinical studies. All right, we have a whole group of others come in. One was, do you post playbacks anywhere? Yes, folks, we do. If you go to the Terry Talks Nutrition site, which is www terrytalksnutrition.com. There is a link there to take you to our webinar site. Um, just hit uh, previously recorded, and it will send you back to a list where you can select from any of our uh, past webinars. Now, the only caveat is, of course, since they're not live, you won't be able to answer, ask your questions live, uh, but uh, and that portion of them are removed, so it's just the presentation. Uh, but uh, yes, if you're interested in listening to this again or you want to refer your friends to it, we'd be most pleased if you would do so. And this information is uh, sent. We send you um, some information as a thank you after your attendance at these webinars that includes some of these links so that you can go and listen again should you desire or 
recommend them to other folks. So thank you for that question. Here is another one is the curcumin formula that you mentioned, the um, curcumin, boswellia, uh, nanokinase, and DLPA product. Is that okay to use for long-term fibromyalgia? And are there other products that should also be taken for fibromyalgia? Um, I believe that you can use it long term, and in my experience, you can use it till you relieve the uh, muscle pain, uh, and then you will be able to reduce the dosage. I don't think you'll have to use a high dosage for a long period of time. You can adjust it to whatever is necessary. But I also like the combination of uh, B6 and magnesium, the P5P and magnesium together. It's a very nice combination. Magnesium is great for the muscles. Vitamin B6 is very good, good, for, good for a lot of complications. Also for shoulder pain and neck pain and arthritis and numbing and tingling of fingers and burning of feet, or numbing of feet, numbing of toes, uh, depression, uh, retention, um, cardiovascular um, conditions, um, congestive heart failure. Um, B6 is magnificent for so many other conditions, which could be another uh, story in itself, another webinar in itself. Uh, magnesium and B6 combination works wonders for a lot of conditions. I would use that along with the combination of the four ingredients. Uh, that would be excellent. Um, try that and see how that works for you. Here's another question that uh, says, what is P5P? Could you explain the P5P form of B6 versus regular B6? Well, regular B6, pyridoxine hydrochloride, has to be converted by the liver before the body can use it. And in its conversion process, it converts it to pyridoxal 5-phosphate. So P5P is the biologically active form. So it is taking the step out that is required by the liver to convert regular B6 to the biologically active form of vitamin B6. So you don't have to worry about that step. If you have, if you've been taking a lot of NSAIDs and you've been taking a lot of drugs, and maybe you have a compromised liver function, you may not be able to convert that B6 into the biologically active form, so therefore you would be deficient in B6. Um, if, if you're diabetic, many diabetics cannot convert the B6 into the P5P. So whenever it's possible, we like to use the biologically active forms of certain nutrients like B12. B12, cyanocobalamin, is not easily convertible because it has to go through the intrinsic factor in the stomach in order to be converted from the, from the cyanocobalamin form to the methylcobalamin form. We like to use the methylcobalamin form because that's the active form of B12. B6 is the same thing. We want to use the active form of B6 to take out that step that is required in case that step is not, um, is not utilized by many people. Excellent. I think that that's going to help people understand the difference between those two. Uh, here's another uh, question. On another subject, what do you know about the codex and what is happening in Europe wait a minute, excuse me, with the restriction of availability and or strength of supplements, and what is the chances of that happening here in the U.S.? You know, that is the subject of, um, you know, I can't answer that question in such a short period of time. We don't know. Um, things are going through, in, the, you know, in fact, um, I can't think of the name of it. Cheryl, I don't know if you remember the name of it. Um, Deborah Ray. Uh huh. Alliance. Oh, what is it? Health Alliance. Uh, Alliance for Health. Alliance, Alliance for, for Health. Health. Please Google Alliance for Health. It's a great organization, and be a member of it. Uh, they keep you up to date on all of the issues concerning Codex, uh, the Food Safety Bill, and all the things that are trying to be pushed through Congress without our knowing it. They advise us on a daily basis if uh, something has to be, you know, if there's an alert or something's going on or if some bill is being passed without our knowledge or there's a statement, you know, like 30,000 pages and they have one statement in there that says we can take away your rights to use vitamins, well, they keep track of that and please join them. They're a great organization. It doesn't cost anything to join. They'd love it if you would donate, but they're there for our safety and for our freedoms of health. And um, I think you should be part of that. And they will give you tons of information on Codex. It's something to be concerned about. It's not active now, but that's when you want to be careful before it becomes active. 
So join and get as much information as you possibly can. But right now I can say right now we're okay, but that's a bad thing to say, that we're okay. Well, so you always cautious. have to stay aware. You bet. You always have to, you know, never take your eye off the road. Right. Um, and uh, it's good that we have organizations out there that are, are very vigilantly trying to protect us from Big Brother coming in and deciding what we can and cannot use for our own health. It's the enemy attacks at night. So <laughs> yeah. stay alert. Stay alert. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we have a couple of questions about, um, one is thank you for the fibromyalgia information. They want to know uh, if if there's another product that could be used in. Some of these are getting very specific to products. You know, why don't they just name. write to yeah, why do they just write to me? I'm, you know, in our webinars we really strive to stick to um ingredients and scientific information. We've tried very hard to make these educational opportunities and not necessarily infomercials. And so in order to not cross that line, if you have a product question that is specific to a the name of a product, please come to Terry Talks Nutrition. And there's a section that says, Just Ask Terry. And I know for a fact, because I walk by his office, that Terry spends a lot of time every day answering each and every question that comes to that site. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful free resource. So um, send Terry a question if you are wondering about a protocol for fibromyalgia, if you want to know what can be taken with the um, that special BCM95 curcumin, the Boswellia, the DLPA, the nettokinase, um, other types of products that can be combined with that for a protocol. I know, Terry, that that's something you've answered before and you'd be glad to do again. Oh, I'd be very happy to. And we answer all the questions. You can talk, you can ask us about anybody's products. And we, we'll do it as, as um, unbiased as we possibly can and we'll give you good information. And if we're not sure, we'll send you back to whoever, you know, whatever company or manufacturer. Or We just want you to get good information to keep you healthy. Here's another one that wants to know um, about controlling blood pressure problems and they want to know if the curcumin formula you described would be helpful with blood pressure, and also what about the P5P with magnesium? Well, P5P with magnesium, magnesium is always indicated in blood pressure problems. Also, is calcium and potassium are as well. Um, but I, there's two plants that I like a lot, two herbs. I like olive leaf extract, and I like hibiscus. Both have been studied to show that they will reduce blood pressure. But keep in mind, folks, we're not doctors. We're not going to play doctors. And this is, blood pressure is serious. Make sure you you go to your doctor. Um, you are you know you are uh, under your doctor's care if you have high blood pressure. You can make choices along with your doctor's um, uh, consultation, and you advise your doctor that you want to try something natural. Work with your doctor, or find a doctor who will work with you. But high blood pressure, if left uncontrolled, can be very very serious. It can cause a lot of cardiovascular events and, and stroke, and, and um, you know, we want you here as long as we possibly can. Excellent. Uh, here's another. Um, Terry, your wife has a store in Green Bay, and it's called Terry Naturally. And uh, here's a gentleman who wants to know where your store is exactly in Green Bay. Oh, you're going to give my wife a plug. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sure Deborah would appreciate that. Well, Deborah has a very beautiful store, and also she has just opened up a brand new gluten-free, organic, locally grown cafe, and it's been it's actually been wonderful. The food is fantastic. I was there for lunch yesterday. I had a, a arugula, um, beef, bacon, um, turkey, um, a little bit of egg white, and uh, boiled egg white, and um, and goat cheese. Salad with um, fresh uh, sweet potato chips, and oh my gosh, it was great! It was just fantastic. It was just packed yesterday. And uh, she is at uh, if you're Green Bay has a freeway that goes across it called 172. Take 172 to GV, depends on what direction you're coming from, east or west. But you would go south on GV, and then get off on Development Lane right by the quick at the gas station, go to one block to Development Drive, and then just turn right, and you'll see some brick buildings called Kettle Creek Crossing. And she's in Kettle Creek Crossing called Cafe Naturally and Terry Naturally. You know, that description of, of uh, your meal just uh, made me start to salivate a little bit here. Oh, it was just fantastic. <laughs> it was excellent. 
I have eaten there at the cafe as well, and, and she does do a a wonderful, wonderful job. And every single thing is organic, and everything is gluten free. And it's just, you know, it, she's a she's a walking um, declaration that you can eat really healthily and not have to sacrifice taste. Right, absolutely. You, you know, you think oh, health food is going to be yucky. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and all it is is just good, wholesome, old fashioned. Uh, preservative free, gluten free, uh, organic. It's wonderful. It's just, it's what you would want to stay healthy. Uh, we had one more question that just came in, uh, wanting to know if the pain combination that you discussed would be useful, equally useful for osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's wonderful for it. So it, it doesn't uh, matter which form of arthritis you no, have. No, it does not. It does not. Pain is pain, inflammation is inflammation. And it works. Um, there are other ingredients that I might I add later. I would add maybe um, devil's claw. I would add Indian gooseberry. Those are other plants that are very, very beneficial. Um, devil's claw is a, a root from, uh, from South Africa that has shown to increase the synovial fluid and hyaluronic acid in the joints. It helps to reduce back pain. Uh, there are many, many good natural components when followed by the scientific studies, and, and in the same dosages of the scientific studies, will give you very, very excellent results, far better than drugs, and far, far, far safer. Excellent. Excellent. I think that I've covered everything, folks. If you think of a question after we end our webinar, feel free to contact Terry at uh, terrytalksnutrition.com, and we are always interested in getting information out to folks. So. We'll be glad to answer your questions anytime. Also, uh, please note that we have some upcoming webinars next week on Thursday, January 18th. I'm sorry, on Tuesday, January 18th, uh, will be a webinar on beating breast cancer and fighting fibrocystic breast disease presented by yours truly. And on the 25th, we're in for a special treat. Author Johnny Bowden is going to present the most effective ways to live longer. Johnny Bowden has written several books, two of which are The Most Effective Natural Cures on Earth and The Most Effective Ways to Live Longer. Um, He's a thought-after speaker and uh, just a a really knowledgeable person in this industry. So I think that's going to be a real treat. That's going to be offered at both 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Central Time. Uh, Also, too, Cheryl, if I may uh, jump in. Surely. Uh, uh, If anybody's in the Green Bay area and would like to come and visit, um, I will be giving a lecture January 26th at Terry Naturally from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, you'll come and hear yours truly, Terry Naturally, give a lecture, and you'll also be able to get uh, free coffee and dessert. Ooh, ooh. You know, does it count for people that have heard you speak more than once, Terry? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and don't just come and get the coffee and dessert and then leave. you got to okay. stay. you got to stay. Right. All right. Okay, no, I'll, all right, I'll live by that rule. Um, I also want to mention that uh, Terry has a new radio show, Terry Talks Nutrition, live on the radio. It's on Internet Radio. You can listen from any computer at uh, healthradio.net. He is live every Wednesday morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central Time. However, if you cannot listen at that point in time, you can go in and listen to the archive shows. They are accessible at any time, and you can go back and listen to as many as you wish. You can talk to Terry directly while he is live on the radio. Uh, You can either call in on the number that's on the screen when you um, access the radio show, or there's a place where you can hit uh, send a message to the host, and you can send Terry a question so you can get your questions answered live on that radio show as well. Um, For more information, please contact us at terrytalksnutrition.com. There you can also sign up for his free weekly newsletter that Terry mentioned. And you can also, if you want a daily dose of inspiration and information on natural medicine, follow Terry on Twitter at twitter.com slash Terry Lemerand. Thank you so much, everyone, for your attendance today. We really appreciate it. We hope that this has been a useful educational tool for you. And if we can ever be of service in the future, please do not hesitate to contact us. And so until we meet again next week for next week's webinar, good health to you.